I really love these papers and they are made with just some simple ingredients from home and ghost prints from napkins. Those ghost prints that we don't know where to use, they're incomplete prints, they're not even white, they're not full design, but when you use them like this, they make beautiful, beautiful vintage looking papers. So if you'd like to see how this is done, please stay tuned. We won't be using any expensive equipment, no Sizzix. This is just so simple, you're going to love it. Hi everyone, it's Ragana from Sasebo. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. In the previous video, we made some handmade paper with napkins. We used mostly white parts of the napkin. When I say white parts, this is what I mean. The third layer that is just white. And I use these nice top prints for something else, but I'm left with these that are incomplete and not really usable for much. Some of them can work in a handmade paper. We'll give you some sort of design depending on the Print, but most of the time I just don't know what to do with these. Until now, I've explained how to do this with Sizzix in the previous video. If you haven't seen it, look for the link below this video in the description box. I will leave it there. And I really love these handmade papers, but I made these with Sizzix. And I realized Sizzix, big shot, is an expensive piece of equipment and not everyone has it. So I was experimenting a bit further to see what I can do with these napkins and the same method of using starch and coffee, but without Sizzix. And that's how I ended up with these papers. As you can see, they're not as flat as these ones. They are a little bit thicker and sturdier and they have lots of texture. So I honestly can't tell which one I like better. And you don't have to use the ghost prints. You can also use just white parts of the napkin or you can even use the prints that way you will have a paper that has beautiful print but it's not as fragile and thin as your napkin you will have a paper that you can use to make things for your journals for example i made those two envelopes and i'm so in love with them i'm trying to explain the texture of these papers because there's no glue inside they're not really plasticky looking they look really old and vintage but also kind of uh, like fabric almost uh, they have that quality almost like faux leather or something like that but like i said no glue and i used only the ingredients that you can find in your kitchen so let's just go through everything that you need for this obviously you will need napkins and i used about anywhere between four to eight layers to get different thicknesses but i also thought maybe we can do one with just white so that you can see the difference and maybe we'll do one that has a regular napkin on on both sides just to see what that would look like i haven't tried those i've been just using these so we'll do one of each we'll do one more and i want to try to add some gauze in between this is something that i've done uh, last year but in that instance i used pva glue napkins and gauze i'll just show you quickly here we go this is the paper I have left and I was going to do a tutorial on that even last year but I just forgot about it and this is just two napkins with gauze in between and then I painted it with some inks and I used this to cut this flower okay Christmas star flower okay because it had that nice feeling of being fabric and paper at the same time. I don't know how to explain. And this is what I have left. I was going to do it again this year and then I ran out of time. Anyway, so we're going to try and make some. But instead of using glue like I've done here, I want to try with starch. All right. So napkins and one gauze. You can use white gauze, of course. Okay. You will need some starch, about a tablespoon. And you will need some 
baking paper. So this is so far everything that you can find in the kitchen. Non-stick baking paper, wax paper, greasy paper. Um, you know, the paper that you line your trays when you want to bake cookies and things like that. So it has to be kind of a little bit oily, waxy freezer paper i'm not sure what it's called in different parts of the world but it's the paper that you use when you're baking so that food doesn't stick to the tray you will need your iron hot iron i really really don't like ironing the only time i use iron is when it's for the craft <laughs> i have to be honest all right an ironing board of some sort because this will get messy and I just want to show you i use this normally to wax paper so this is just chipboard just a piece of chipboard and i used an old towel and just put it over i think the first layer i stapled and then when i ran out of staples i just used hot glue to secure it so it doesn't really move when i'm using it so i'm gonna use that you will need a spray bottle that can hold at least two cups of liquid and you'll need something to make the starch this time we're not just going to dissolve the starch in the liquid we're actually going to cook it properly in the previous video you can see that i've just added it to hot water and mixed then it was always settling on the bottom and this time i want to show you a different way of making starch that is a bit more work but it's actually better because you will have a nice liquid that is a little bit gooey and thicker but it's gonna be much easier to apply you won't have to shake it all the time and worry about your spray bottle being clogged and for the liquid i was thinking of using coffee as well as water if you don't like the smell of coffee you can just use plain water you can use tea you can use any other dye that you can heat up you can also add water and maybe some watercolors and have it in any color that you like. This is just something that I prefer. So you will need two cups of liquid of some sort that you can cook your starch inside. Okay, so when you make it like this, the liquid that you use has to be cold. Okay, so you have to start with cold and gradually heat it up. I'm going to start with just one cup of water cold water, cold tap water and I'm going to put two of these inside okay this says half tablespoon and I want one whole tablespoon so I'm going to add two of these okay and I'm going to just dissolve it sorry about the noise and then I'm going to add one cup of coffee. This is just regular coffee. You can use instant coffee as well, I suppose. Just make it, let it cool down and then use it. Okay, I have my hot plate here. You can do this in the kitchen, but I'm filming here instead of in the kitchen. And I'm going to turn the heat on to max. I'm going to put that there. So the important thing with this is for you to mix it continuously until it starts to thicken. It doesn't have to boil. Actually, I wouldn't want it boiling hot. Just enough till it starts to thicken and then you take it off the heat. I think that's enough it is not as milky it's more clear and it's a little bit thicker than it was so i'm going to turn the heat off and i'm going to mix this a little bit longer and i'm going to let it cool down a little bit before i put it in my plastic bottle let's put that in If you do this and you end up with a lot of 
clumps you can always strain it so as you can see it is not so liquid as it was when we've done it without cooking and there's no white sediment on the bottom and if you want a darker color use stronger coffee i'd suggest or perhaps it's possible to just cook it in coffee without water just use water because it's easier to see when it's dissolved or not it's still warm and it's totally fine you can wait until it cools or you can use it straight away it doesn't really matter i'm going to turn my iron on and i'll switch the steam off so no steam just hot iron and i'm going to turn it to the hottest okay, i'm going to let it warm up and another thing if your starch mixture is too thick you can always add more liquid whether it's water or coffee and then shake it okay if it's not thick enough if it's really runny you can add more starch and just cook a bit more let's cut the baking paper okay I'll just cut it a bit bigger than my board and you'll need two sometimes this paper comes in brown color sometimes it's white doesn't really matter because we're going to use it to make the ironing easier because if you were to iron directly on the napkin with this it will all stick to your iron this is supposed to have i guess a greasier side and i can never tell <laughs> which is which to me it seems it's the same on both i'm gonna tuck this one underneath so it doesn't move okay because I can't really do this directly onto this um, towel again it would stick to it okay so we said we're gonna do one just with ghost prints first okay where are my ghost prints here and I find that six layers gives nice um, papers okay I want to use that red one and this one doesn't really have much but yeah we'll just use that and maybe that one so how many do I have and that one when I was doing them the first time I didn't actually look I just took the first one from the batch and just kept layering them without any thinking of what sort of layers I'm going to use and what sort of final result I'm going to get and it's really fun and this is kind of unpredictable because you layer them one on top of the other and they all have different bits and pieces of design showing usually one of the napkins is more dominant or the color of one napkin is more dominant than the other but I really love the effect. Okay, so now we just spray. The iron is hot, so we just spray. No settlement down the bottom, as you can see. I find that when I spray from a greater distance, I get better coverage, but I also get more mess everywhere. So. <laughs> You decide how you want to do and you and you can see that the napkin is a little bit wrinkled and that is fine it's supposed to be like that so then you take another one place it on top and then spray again So that's two. Now we're gonna get the third one. Okay. 
fifth one. And the last one. I really wanted to use this one with poppies. That's the last. Okay, now I'm going to get my paper and place it over. And I'm just going to gently squeeze out like that with my hand. Okay, now you take your iron. And you start somewhere from the middle. From the middle and you push towards the edges. Okay. And of course you need to prepare the surface that you're going to place these papers and leave them to dry. Again, it should be a non-stick surface. I use just the painting canvas that I use when I dry papers. It's so stained, but eventually one day I'm going to paint something over it. For now, I've been just using it to uh, dry my papers, and it's a huge one. <laughs> okay, so you just do this, and you can see here it's getting drier, so it's lifting off this uh, non-stick paper. a little bit after these papers dry they tend to get a little bit wrinkly so what I did with mine I stacked them up and then I placed them under something heavy put a board first and then more books on top just to flatten them out but you can also iron them again once they are Kind of dry now. I can see that this is lifting off. See how it's lifting off. So I think it's ready to be separated from this paper. Okay, let's have a look. You have to peel slowly because it might get stuck to this paper sometimes in some areas. Usually it doesn't, but it might. Okay. And you keep that sticky side up because we're going to reuse this paper several times. And then you try to peel it off. Slowly just go. You go slowly if you pull too hard chances are you're going to rip it okay and keep it low like that just peel it off like that now you take it to your drying area and let it dry flat now let's do one with white napkins just so that you can see the difference in the look I'll just use the white part, which is the third layer of a napkin. So I have a feeling these would look also very nice, like a handmade paper look. You know, like without any print, without any uh, design, just plain. And if this works out nice, then you wouldn't need to use your Sizzix. And one good thing about this uh, way of doing it is that you can make larger papers compared to the small ones, especially if you have a small Sizzix like me. And there's a lot more we can do when we have larger pieces of paper. three I lost count <laughs> I talk too much all right oh I'm so excited I can't wait to show you what else I have been doing with napkins 
and it all started because one of my friends was downsizing and I bought some of her stash and uh, in his stash was a lot of nice napkins and I realized I have way too many napkins and I have to start using them more so I've been trying to, to think of uh, ways to use them in my journals. Now, is this now six or is it five? I totally lost the count. Okay, that wouldn't be wrong to make it thinner or thicker. It's not that important, so I'll just put one more. Okay, and then again sticky side down and squeeze the excess as much as we can just to make it nice flat. and then yeah so I'm really happy with these papers. I mean, really love those envelopes that I made, and I think I want to uh, make some like pocket pages as well to go in the journal. And I was thinking maybe we can do a video where we just make things with these papers. Wouldn't that be fun? To actually help this um, process of ironing, you could turn this like that to the other side and then maybe iron a little bit more from this side. It will just be quicker. And these papers. Um, baking papers that I've used ended up looking so good at the end definitely don't throw them out because they look really pretty after you've done with this they end up stained and looking really nice and make that really lovely sound so I stamped some and I've been making things with them I really love them all right let's turn that again onto this side I'm going to fold this underneath And here we go, let's slowly peel. Okay. Sometimes you can do this the edges just push these edges together if they stick it will be easier to lift off and if like in this case here this is a bit stuck there so I will just try from another side to do this or some other tool that you want Let's see. okay I think we're ready to pull it now good nice that's on that side so I'm gonna leave it to dry 
Now what you can do is in between those papers, you can just take a piece of cloth and wipe this a little bit. Because uh, as you work, you'll have more and more of this gooey stuff stuck to the paper and it will cause your napkin to be stuck to this. Okay, let's make one that actually has some of these napkins that are like a proper proper design on one side. Maybe I'll try with this one on the bottom because I like it and it has a design that spreads across. It's not like in four sections. It's one and I'm going to turn it down like this. Okay, I'm going to spray. And in between layers, I'm going to use these ghost prints. I'm going to go with four different ghost prints. I could use even just white napkins, but I just want to use these for this because I really love the effect. It's two. One more from here. Oh, let's do the lavender one. Why not? I like it. That one. So this is like a regular print, the top one, not a ghost print. Okay. Once you put the last layer over, you don't need to spray again. So let's push that. say uh, when I tried this for the first time with iron instead of paper I used fabric and it did not work because this starch went right through the fabric and it made a mess of my iron everything became so sticky and it took me forever to clean the iron to scrape it off so you could possibly put fabric but underneath the paper to get that embossing effect of fabric but definitely you need this paper over whatever else you use underneath because otherwise it will become really impossible to do it will stick to your iron I mean, you can't really go on and on with this, make it really dry. But it's about a balance of doing it just enough so it doesn't start sticking to this uh, paper. I had one map that actually stuck to this paper. The first layer was stuck to the paper, so I just left it there and I just peeled the rest off. So it can happen if it gets too dry. Love how grungy these papers turn. Good. 
So we have that design on that side and we have this on that side. Love it. Okay, we'll do one more. But with this attempt, I want to use cheesecloth and just white napkins. And maybe I'll do... How should I do this? Maybe I'll do two napkins, then cheesecloth and two more. I don't need to go with six, I think. It would be probably too thick. And if I just use one on each side of the fabric, I don't think it would be strong enough. I don't know. I haven't done this with uh, starch, like I said. I've done it with glue and it worked with just two napkins. But, um, yeah, this is not as strong as glue. So I don't want to risk it falling apart. big enough maybe I'll just stretch it out a little bit this is a dyed gauze so that's why it's green it would have been otherwise white I think I've used all my white gauze and I was dying lately but um, this color is just as nice. I think I'm going to use it a lot if it works out well. Okay, let's spray again. I suppose you can use cheesecloth. It's a little bit thicker than the gauze, I think. This is medical gauze, I think. Cheesecloth tends to be a bit more... thicker and more dense all right that's the last one we don't need to spray that one and let's put that over and push it out Is cool. Won't make any trouble for me. <laughs> Shouldn't. But I'll iron that as well. Over the Christmas and New Year, I actually had a flu, and even after I recovered, I just did not feel inspired to do much, and had no ideas. Even if I had ideas, I just couldn't be bothered doing anything. And it came to a point that I was really desperate because you know i wasn't well and i didn't feel like doing videos i didn't feel like doing anything so i thought i hope this doesn't last long and then what happened i came here to this room i was going to finish the journal and then the ideas kept popping in my head like every five minutes i had trouble writing everything down i had so many ideas for so many videos in like one hour and now it's just a matter of filming all these videos and showing you and sharing all these ideas with you i guess we have times when we feel like we're not so motivated and that's all right maybe it's best when that happens to just let it run its course and it will pass eventually okay I hope I haven't messed this one up totally because it's 
seems to oh it's all right when i did the first batch i was able to make like something like 10 of these papers before my grease paper has become unusable or too sticky like it's sticking here to this so i have to keep doing this off totally stuck to this paper oh well i just pull it it doesn't matter it will be like that hopefully it will be all right on this side it seems it's okay i think i went a bit too long with the iron on top of that and that's why i have these rips but i'm going to leave them who knows once it's dry it might look really nice <laughs> so now you wipe that off and you let those papers dry don't throw them away just get rid of the excess like that i'm gonna let them dry this is one of the papers I was left after I've done the first batch. Nice and wrinkly and nicely stained. Look at that. And I used the other one to make this. Okay. Let's see. I just stamped all over it with different stamps in different colors, whatever I had. And then with one part I made this like a page for a journal with a pocket and then I made this little flower with the smaller pieces and I still had some left so I made these like glassine little bags and put things inside there they are grungy looking and I really like them I think they would look cool in a journal to hold little pictures or, or labels or uh, stickers even seeds so that's what you can do with these papers once you finish making the papers from napkins so don't throw them away i'm going to let these completely dry flat like this on this piece of <laughs> stretched canvas <laughs> these are stains from when i was dyeing papers and i keep drying papers on it until it's completely stained then i'll paint something it's a huge canvas, but it fits up to nine, 12 by 12 sheets of papers or napkins. Let's just let them dry and then we'll come back to see what we've made. Here are the papers and they are dry, but a little bit wrinkled. And ideally I would place this underneath something heavy and leave overnight. But I really want to film this video and I wanted to try if I could iron the paper now and just try in one corner if if it starts sticking to my iron i'll probably get some paper but i can see already that it's all right so i can just flatten it a little bit like this oh it looks nice on this side too really like real homemade paper and you wouldn't be able to do this if you use PVA glue it would stick to your iron and I guess this is all right now that it's dry you can iron directly on the napkin 
I love it. Look how tough that is. It's absolutely amazing. A lot of you have asked me, is it possible to do this without Sizzix? And I can tell you, yes. And these papers are large. They're like scrapbooking papers. Over 12 inches. So, wonderful result. And I'm really thrilled with it. Just starch and coffee and hot iron. So if you run out of glue, you know how to do this without the glue. And there's no shiny um, effect from the glue. Now this is the one that got stuck. So it's a bit rough, but it's also great if you want to make something like really grungy looking. I love it. So it worked with the gauze in between those layers and i would probably leave this look at that can be a page in a journal and you just fold that in i love it very unusual okay and this is the one with just white napkins so the third layer that didn't have any print so let's have a look looks like a really really old paper now doesn't it really love it yeah it's actually tough it's so tough yeah perfect for those envelopes that i've shown you and a little bit of this one and this is the one where we used regular napkins so the top layer on outer sides and we used whatever we had on the inside so now you have like double-sided paper if you decide to do a page in a journal like this fold it you can make a pocket here like that and then fold that i don't want to fold now because i'm not sure what i'm going to do you can do the envelopes as well oh so many possibilities i love these i love these anyway Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was inspirational. And I hope I see you soon in my next video. Bye for now.